The Pig Prince by Giovanni Francesco Straparola. Gallo To, king of Anglia, was a man with many blessings. He was very wealthy, and his wife, Ercilia, daughter of Matthias, king of Hungary, was a princess whose beauty and virtues outshone those of all other ladies of the time. Moreover, Galeotto was a wise king who ruled his land in such a way that no one ever raised a complaint against him. However, though he and Ercilia had been married for several years, they had no children, and they were both most sad about this situation. One day, while Ercilia was walking in her garden, she suddenly felt tired, and noticing a spot nearby covered with fresh grass, she went over to it and sat down. Overcome by weariness and soothed by the sweet singing of the birds in the green bushes, she fell asleep. While she slept, three fairies happened to pass by, and all three held mankind somewhat in scorn. So when they beheld the sleeping queen, they stopped and, gazing at her beauty, conferred together how they might protect her with some spell. Once they reached an agreement, the first fairy cried out, I wish that no man shall be able to harm her, and the next time she lies with her husband, she will become pregnant, and that she shall bear a son who will be the most handsome child in the world. Then the second fairy declared, I wish that no one shall ever have the power to offend her, and that the prince, her son, will be endowed with every virtue under the sun. And the third fairy said, I wish that she will be the wisest among women, but that the son, she conceives, will be born in the skin of a pig, with a pig's ways and manners, and he will be obliged to live like this until he has wed three times. As soon as the three fairies had flown away, Ursilia awoke, stood up, and returned directly to the palace, talking, taking with her the flowers that she had plucked. It was only a few days later that she felt she had become pregnant. When the time of her delivery arrived, she gave birth to a son with the body and limbs like those of a pig. The king and queen lamented this prodigy a great deal, and the king, bearing in mind how good and wise his wife was, felt moved more than once to put this offspring of hers to death and cast it into the sea so that she might be spared the shame of having given birth to him. But when he debated in his mind and considered that this son, whatever he might be, was of his own begetting, he discarded the cruel plans he had been deliberating and seized with pity and grief he decided that the son should be brought up and nurtured like a rational being and not a brute beast. Therefore, the child was nursed with the greatest care and would often be brought to the queen, and then he would put his little snout and his little paws in his mother's lap, and, moved by natural affection, she would caress him by stroking his bristly back with her hand and embrace and kiss him as though he were human. In turn, he would wag his tail and give other signs to show that he was conscious of his mother's affection. When he grew older, the piglet began to talk like a human being and to wander around the city, but if he ever came near any mud or dirt, he would wallow in it, as pigs are accustomed to do, and return home covered with filth. Then, when he would approach the king and queen, he would rub his sides against their fair garments, defiling them with all kinds of dirt. Nevertheless, they endured it all because he was their son. One day, he came home covered with mud and filth, as was his wont, and he lay down on his mother's rich robe and said in a grunting tone, Mother, I want to get married. When the queen heard this, she replied, Don't talk so foolishly. What maid would ever take you for a husband? Furthermore, do you think that any noble or knight would ever give his daughter to someone so dirty and stinking as you? But he kept on grunting that he must have a wife of one sort or another. Not knowing how to manage him in this instance, the queen consulted the king about this problem and said to him, Our son wishes to marry, but where shall we find anyone who will take him as a husband? In the meantime, the pig came to his mother every day with the same demand. 
And one day he said, I must have a wife, and I'll never leave you in peace until you obtain a maiden for me. I've seen one today who pleases me a great deal. It happened that this maiden was the daughter of a poor woman who had three daughters, each of whom was very lovely. When the queen heard this, she summoned the woman and her eldest daughter and said, Good mother, you are poor and burdened with children. If you agree to what I'm about to say to you, you will be rich. I have a son who is, as you see, in the form of a pig, and I would like to marry him to your eldest daughter. You mustn't regard him, but think the king and of me, and remembering that your daughter will inherit this whole kingdom when the king and I die. When the young girl heard the words of the queen, she was very disturbed and blushed red for shame. She said that on no account would she listen to the queen's proposition. However, her mother, mother pleaded with her so forcefully that at last she yielded. So when the pig came home that day, all covered with dirt as usual, his mother said to him, My son, we found for you the wife you desire. And she commanded the bride to be brought into the chamber. And by this time she had been dressed in magnificent regal attire and was presented to the pig prince. When he saw her so lovely and desirable, he was filled with joy and despite the fact that he was all stinking and dirty, he jumped around her and endeavored to show his affection by pawing and nuzzling her. But she found that he was soiling her beautiful dress and thrust him aside. Whereupon the pig said to her, Why are you pushing me like that? Haven't I had these garments made for you yourself? And then she answered disdainfully, No, neither you nor any other of the whole kingdom of hogs has done this thing. And when the time for going to bed arrived, the young girl said to herself, What am I going to do with this foul beast? There's only one solution. Tonight, while he's sound asleep, I'll kill him. Now the pig prince, who was not far off, heard these words, but said nothing. And when the two retired to their chamber, he got into bed next to her, stinking and dirty as he was. He defiled the sumptuous bed with his filthy paws and snout. Soon after, his wife fell asleep, and then he struck her with his sharp hooves, driving them into her breast so that he killed her. The next morning, the queen went to visit her daughter-in-law, and to her great grief, she found that the pig had killed her. When he came back from wandering about the city, he said in reply to the queen's reproaches that he had only dealt with his wife as she had intended to deal with him. Then he retired in a bad mood. Not many days passed before the pig prince began to be sweet to the queen to allow him to marry one of the other sisters. But at first the queen would not listen to his request. However, he persisted, threatening to ruin everything in the palace if he could not wed the maiden. Hearing this, the queen went to the king and told him everything and answered that perhaps it would be wiser to kill their ill-fated offspring before um, before he did some fatal mischief in the city. Yet the queen felt all the tenderness of a mother toward him and loved him very dearly in spite of his brutal nature and she could not endure the thought of his being put to death. So once again, she summoned the poor woman to the palace, along with her second daughter, and she had a long talk with her, begging her to give the daughter marriage. At last, the girl consented to take the pig for a husband, but her fate was no happier than her sister's, for the bridegroom killed her as he had killed his other bride, and then fled headlong from the palace. When he came back, dirty as usual and sinking so dreadfully that no one could approach him, the king and queen reprimanded him gravely for the outrage he had committed. But again he cried out boldly that if he had not killed her, she would have killed him. And then, as he had done before, the pig, in very short order, to plead with his mother to let him wed the youngest sister, who was more beautiful than either of the others. When his request was steadfastly refused, he became more insistent than ever, and in the end, using violent and bloodthirsty language, he began to threaten the queen's life 
if he was refused the girl for his wife. When she heard this shameful and unnatural speech, the queen was almost broken-hearted and felt she might go out of her mind. But putting all considerations aside, she summoned the poor woman and her third daughter, whose name was Mel Meldina, and she said to the girl, Meldina, my child, I would be greatly pleased if you would take the pig prince for your husband. Pay no regard to him, but to his father and to me. Then, if you're prudent and tolerate him, you may become the happiest woman in the world. In response, Meldina said with a grateful smile that she was quite content to do as the queen requested and thanked her humbly for deigning to choose her as a daughter-in-law, for since she herself had nothing in the world, it was indeed her good fortune that she, a poor girl, should become the daughter-in-law of a powerful sovereign. When the queen heard this modest and amiable reply, she could not help she could not keep back the tears for the happiness she felt. But she also feared that the same fate might be in store for Meldina as that which her sisters had suffered. After the new bride was dressed in rich tire and decked with jewels, she awaited the bridegroom, and the pig prince came in filthier and muddier than ever. However, she spread out her rich gown and asked him to lie down by her side. Thereupon the queen told her to thrust him away, but she would not consent and said, There are three wise sayings, gracious lady, which I remember very well. The first is that it is folly to waste time in searching for that which cannot be found. The second is that we should believe nothing that we may hear except for that which bears the mark of sense and reason. The third is that when you have once obtained possession of some rare and precious treasure, prize it well and keep a firm hold upon it. When the maiden had finished speaking, the pig prince, who had been wide awake and had heard all that she had said, got up and kissed her on the face and neck and bosom and shoulders with his tongue. And she did not shy away from returning his caresses, so that he felt a warm love for her. As soon as the time arrived for retiring for the night, the bride went to bed and awaited her unseemly spouse. And when he came, she raised the cover and asked him to lie near her and put his head on the pillow. Covering him carefully with the night clothes, she drew the curtains so that he would not feel cold. When morning came, the pig got up and went out to pasture, as was his custom, and very soon after the queen went to the bride's chamber, expecting to find that she had met with the same fate as her sisters. But when she saw her laying in bed, all defiled as it was, and looking pleased and contented, she thanked God that her son had at last found a suitable spouse. One day after this, when the pig prince was conversing pleasantly with his wife, he said to her, Melinda, M M Meldina, my beloved wife, if I could be completely certain that you could keep a secret, I'd tell you one of mine, something I have kept hidden for many years, since I feel you are very prudent and wise, and that you love me truly, I'd like to share this secret with you. You may safely tell it to me if you want, said Valdina, for I promise never to reveal it to anyone without your consent. Since he was sure of his wife's discretion and fidelity, he immediately shook off the dirty and stinking skin of the pig from his body, and he stood revealed as a handsome and well-shaped young man. And all that night he rested closely folded in the arms of his beloved wife. However, he ordered her solemnly to keep silent about the miracle she had seen, for the time had not come for his complete delivery from this misery. Therefore, when he left the bed, he donned the dirty pig's hide once more. Of course, Maldina was overjoyed that, instead of a pig, she had gained a handsome and gallant young prince for a husband. And not long after this, it turned out that she was pregnant. In due time she gave birth to a fair and shapely boy, and the king and queen were beside themselves with joy, especially when they found out that the newborn child had the form of a human being, and not that of a beast. But the burden of the strange secret which her husband had confided to her weighed heavily on Maldina, and one day she went to her mother-in-law and said, Gracious queen, when I first married your son, I believed I was married to a beast, but now I find... 
you have given me the handsomest, the worthiest, and the most gallant young man ever born in the world to be my husband. I want you to know that when he comes to my chamber to lie by my side, he casts off his dirty hide and leaves it on the ground and is changed into a graceful, comely youth. It's impossible for everyone, anyone to believe this miracle if you don't see it with your own eyes. When the queen heard these words, she thought that her daughter-in-law must be jesting with her, but Maldina insisted that what she said was true. So the queen inquired how she could witness the miracle of her own eyes to determine whether it was true. And Maldina replied, Come to my chamber tonight when we fall asleep. The door will be open, and you'll find that what I tell you is the truth. That same night, when the appointed time had arrived, and everyone had gone to bed, the queen had torches kindled and went to her son's chamber, accompanied by the king. Upon entering, she saw the pig skin lying on the floor in the corner of the room, and when she went to the bedside, she found a handsome young man with his arms wrapped around Meldina. To say the least, the queen and king were extremely delighted, and the king ordered the pig's hide to be torn to shreds before anyone was allowed to leave the room. Their joy was in fact so great that they almost died from it. King Galiotto, knowing he had such a fine son and a grandchild as well, put aside his diadem and his royal robes and had his son crowned king in his place with exceeding pomp. Thereafter, his son was known as King Pig, and to the supreme satisfaction of all the people in the realm, the young king began his reign and lived long and happily with Maldina, his beloved wife.